Welcome to Grand Sam Sports NBA. Today we're going to be talking about some trade deadline moves. Uh, last night was a trade deadline, and it was a eventful one, yeah. as you said before. Not a lot of stars moved, but a lot of role players moved. Me and Jay's put down a list of our top three favorite moves, and we're going to be going over them. So I'm going to be going first. Uh, my f top three favorite moves. I had to start off number one with PJ Washington. I am a fan of the PJ Washington move because, to me, it's kind of the perfect role player for the Mavericks. Grant Williams wasn't really doing it. These guys really like to have their shooting fours um, with Maxi Kleba, all those guys like that. Um, now that all those guys are gone, PJ Washington's a athletic shooting four. He can do something other than just sit in a corner. He can play defensively. He's actually versatile. I'm a really big fan of this move. As well, uh, Bogdanovich, me, mm -hmm. I know I'm also, I'm a massive fan of this move. I think that it kind of makes them kind of spreads them out a little bit more, gives them that shooting that they do not have. Uh, sadly, they sent Quinton Grimes to the... To the uh, I mean, Grimes was disgruntled, so it, it really did surprise <laughs> they me. They sent him to the Shadow Realm and the Pistons. So. <laughs> <You're that. laughs> I mean, hey, they've won two games in a row. I mean, give them the respect. Mm. Hey, that's an accomplishment. Hang the banner, Detroit. <laughs> and, uh, of course, a uh, move that you might not be the happiest with, but I love. Uh, Buddy Heel to the Sixers. We'll get into that. I love that move. Um, I think that the biggest thing that the Sixers kind of rely need to rely on more is shooting. You have one of the best bigs in the league that clogs up the paint. Give it to one of the best shooters in the league and watch. Let let him score twenty. Uh, best shooter. And we'll, we'll get one we'll, of the more I'll, consistent I'll, shooters. I'll get into that when I have my little rant a little bit. We'll talk about that. Yeah. But my three favorites. I'll begin with once again Bogdanovich. I mean, going from Detroit to New York. That's a, great, that's a great move for him personally, mm -hmm. but also a great move for the Knicks. Like you said, it gets them that shooter that they, they really needed alongside Brunson and Hart and all those players there. That I mean, the Knicks, they have a squad now. They also got Alec Burks in this trade. So it's two really good players that they got, uh, two good role players that they got that can really fill in those gaps that the Knicks had before the deadline. Now the Knicks, they might be a top three, top two team in the East. They've been on a heater recently. They've won a, a lot of games, a lot of big games too. And I know Indiana plays them, I think, tomorrow Good so in New York too so we're gonna get torched probably but that's all right but the other one I like Gordon Hayward going from Charlotte to OKC the Hornets they, they kind of just sold the house at this point they kind of gave up I don't blame them the Hornets have nothing going for them they haven't had anything going for them ball can't stay healthy I mean they just have no good players that can stick around I mean Hayward he's a great player still not as good as he was back in his Utah days or even when he was with, I think, Boston for a little bit, right? After that injury he had with Boston. <laughs> but he's still a great player, and I think OKC, this is the right move, getting a veteran wing for your squad that you could really use some extra depth on this OKC squad because they have the players there with Shea, with Giddy, with um, uh, Holmgren, and the other ones they got. Mm -hmm. They have the squad there, so getting a veteran in to kind of lead those young players, perfect fit for, for the Thunder, in my opinion. The other one, I like Monte Morris going from the Pistons to Minnesota. So two Pistons in my list, because he's one of the more reliable backup point guards in this league. He just came back from injury. He was six games with Detroit as the backup point guard behind Cade Cunningham. And now he's going behind to Anthony Edwards, I think. Is he the point guard, shooting guard, kind of for Minnesota, give or, give or take? But yeah. he's going to be the backup point guard in Minnesota. He's one of the most reliable ones. That has some of the least turnovers in the NBA at that backup point guard position. In Minnesota, I mean, they gave up a decent amount to go and get him. But I think it's the right move heading towards the playoffs because Timberwolves, they need some veteran players as well because mm -hmm. they don't have as much experience in the playoffs as some of the players do like Monte Morris. I agree. When I looked at the Monte Morris trade, I kind of just skipped over it. You bring up a really good point. I didn't even think about it that way, honestly. Um, we each picked a team that we think won and lost yep. overall. Um, for my winner, I'm going to go with the Dallas Mavericks yep. um, because obviously I'm a fan of the P.J. Washington trade, but that wasn't it. They also picked up Daniel Gafford, who is a mm -hmm. personal favorite center of mine. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very random personal <laughs> favorite, but he's a phenomenal rim protector. He's great on the screen and roll. He's consistent in the inside. Exactly what they need alongside Derek Lively. They actually have a real big, someone that can actually do something. And I'm obviously not a top guy, but he was cheap. Mm -hmm. And he was, from, he was from the Wizards. He's the best you're going to get in this deadline. I think that that's a, uh, it's an ambitious move. What about you, Winner? The New York Knicks, I was talking about a little bit with <clears throat> Bogdanovich. Obviously, as a Pacer fan, I really dislike the Knicks, but I genuinely think they can make a run maybe even to the finals with the squad they have. Brunson is a top-tier point guard in this league. I still think he's behind Halliburton, don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah. For sure. 
I mean, that's, that's, one of the t that's one of the top arguments right now with Brunson versus Halliburton, but we'll, I'll kind of talk about that later. Yeah. But they have a <coughs> real squad. I think this is the most hype the Knicks have gotten in years. Honestly, I'm not a Knicks hater. I, I personally like the Knicks. I think personally that this is a team that can make some serious damage if they Oh, know, absolutely. I mean, this is the, I mean, <coughs> the amount of media attention they're getting right now, obviously they, are, they usually get Best a lot of are, attention, yeah. but they're getting way more than Lakers they have type recently. Attention. Lakers type attention. But I'm going to go into my loser. This is the third year in a row they didn't make a deal at the deadline. What are they doing? Because they don't, they don't know. That's the thing. They, the, the Bulls, they don't know what they're doing. I mean, they have DeMar DeRozan there. They have Zach Levine there. The Bulls just seem stuck in a loop. They just mm. can't figure out a way out of it. Are they going to rebuild? Do they want to contend? But right there, they're ninth in the East, right? And mediocre again. Yeah, I mean, the Bulls, they're one of those teams that just, like, they needed to make a deadline move. Yeah. I mean, they're one of the few teams that should have traded their stars. I mean, we said, because you have aging stars in a place that just isn't looking like it's going to be a winning place. Uh, moving on to mine, a um, uh, team that's not with aging stars, it's the Pacers. The Pacers, for me, as were, your loser, they are my losers okay. of this deadline because they trading away Buddy Heald. I'm personally a fan of the Buddy Heald. I think that the way that he expands the floor, he even if he isn't on that night, he is a threat. And for them to have picked up Cork Moss, who has been trying to leave the Sixers for years, I mean that man was. And then we waved him. Yeah, and then yes, yeah, and then picking signing James Johnson. Yeah, you guys gonna want a few Ooh, more fights. Our security guards back. Um, it's just. <laughs> The moves that the Pacers made didn't make any sense. They felt like moves for the sake of moves. They felt like they were trying to be aggressive, but they just didn't make moves that I personally am a fan of. Now, obviously, you're a Pacers fan. You might have a different view on this, but personally, for me, not a fan of it. See, I knew, so we'll go into my little time here, rant about what the Pacers did, because I have no clue what they're doing. Yeah. We knew the Pacers were going to be, you know, very active at the trade deadline. They already were getting Pascal Siakam. That was a great move, in my opinion. That, that was one of the best moves we made ever in, our, I think, our history, yeah. probably. But then we go and make these little moves that make almost no sense. Yep. We knew Buddy Heald won it out. We knew, we knew that since the offseason when we gave him, you know, permission to go seek a trade out. But, I mean, the connection between him and Halliburton, they are legitimately best friends. Mm -hmm. And Halliburton, I mean, that's the guy he's been playing with his entire, entire career. He's been, he's been with him since Sacramento. Yep. Halliburton and Buddy, the connection is there, always has been. I, I was one of those guys, one of those fans that I think wanted Buddy gone after a little bit because he just hasn't been the player he can be yep. this season. I mean, shooting-wise, he has his nights, but when he has his off nights, he is horrific. Stinker. He is horrific on offense, and he really hurts the Pacers in those games. So I think it was the right thing to trade him but what we got in return I don't think was what we had Very anticipated to get I mean we got Cork Maz and Marcus Morris why Morris I don't know but and then three second round picks which that really doesn't equivalent to anything nowadays these second round picks only matter that much as they used to yeah and there were rumors that the Pacers were going to get a first round pick for him but they just weren't able to make that deal it seemed like a weird trade this was the one I was okay with though I was okay. this was an okay trade in my opinion but the other two just made it no sense Picking up uh, Corey Joseph. No, I'll person. get in that one in a second. Doug McDermott, Doug McBuckets, as we like to call him here, he's back as a pacer. He, 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 had a, he had a pretty good stint here in Indiana. He's kind of our Buddy Heald replacement. You know, we, we lost some shooting with Buddy, now we got some back with McDermott, but he was barely playing on yeah. the Spurs. Hmm. So that's kind of a problem. And we also traded Marcus Morris in the second round pick there to, to uh, San Antonio for McDermott. I don't know why. And then we just try to continue the 2018 Pacers reunion by trading for Corey Joseph yeah. and then proceeding to waive him after trading for him. So basically you guys just gave away some assets for nothing. Actually, no. It was, uh, it was different than I thought it was. We gave away a second-round pick. We also received a second-round pick in cash in return, cash equivalent to $6 million huh. in cash. So actually that's a pretty good deal. But still, well, you know. the, these, these deals just didn't make sense. Okay. In, in the short term, I think this hurts Pacers long term more money to spend in the offseason. Yeah, I agree. But, so so it's, it's not horrible, but it wasn't great like I, had, yeah. I, like I was hoping originally. I, was, I, I think that's what it was for me, just the disappointment. And it wasn't really a lot of teams that made like, oh my God, what are you doing, other than the Bulls. And I don't want to pick the same one as you. So I kind of wanted to get Bogdanovich back, honestly, as that shooter for, over Buddy. Yeah. But then obviously he went to New York, and now he's going to light us up tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, moving on to my team, my Celtics, of mm -hmm. course. They made... Not a lot of moves, but I feel like the moves that they made, I'm a fan of. Yeah. Um, Jaden Springer, okay. <laughs> um, but I like the Xavier Tillman pickup. Mm -hmm. Because Xavier Tillman, back when he was playing for Michigan State, 
was a phenomenal college center. Playing in Memphis, he's been okay. But I feel like giving him a team where right now our backup center is Luke Cornett, um, if any, like Luke Cornett's there was, been, there's, hold on, there's a, there's a third guy as well that was playing against Indiana a few weeks ago. What's his name? He's the backup center. Uh, Quaida. Huh? Quaida. Quaida. Yeah. He used to play really good in that game. Yeah, he, we have a bunch of centers that are very unproven. So, I mean, getting Xavier Tillman in there, just be like, here, like, fight for your spot. Yeah. Instead of Memphis where he's not going to play at all, might as well give him a chance. What did you that, trade to get Tillman? Um, if Do I you remember know? correctly, it was a second and Blanton. These seconds are getting thrown around like nothing yeah. nowadays. It was a second and Blanton, if I remember I'm pretty correctly. sure Indiana owns like 14 second picks the next like five yeah. seasons because we're just like that, I guess. Yeah, it was, it, it was, we didn't give up much. Talk about hogging picks, moving. the Thunder are still hogging picks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think, you know, grade wise, B minus. I mean, it's nothing, expe- but it's nothing bad. So, I mean, yeah. it gets a little bit above average. Um, but this, Coming up soon, All-Star Saturday. Next weekend. Uh, they just announced who's going to be in all of the competitions. So. We're going to have to do it. We're going to have to cut out a part, probably the All-Star part. Do you want to cut out the All-Star part or do you want to be in the What time is it? We yeah. said 22 25. That's fine. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Okay. Sounds good. We'll just cut that out. Okay. Okay. And so, obviously, coming up this weekend, we have All Star Weekend. Mm-hmm. Or not this weekend. Next weekend. No. Oh. <laughs> All good. <clears throat> Sam, I'm going to shoot you. I obviously coming up soon, and I want to say next weekend will mm-hmm. be All Star uh, All Star Weekend. All-Star Saturday was just announced. We got the dunk contest, skills challenge, the three-point contest, the other three-point contests. We get two of them, because why not? So we got a lot of stuff coming up mm-hmm. this, this Saturday, and we kind of want to talk about the who was picked and our predictions on who we have on top. Um, first off, we're going to talk about the three-point contest. So, I mean, we have our list of players right here. An interesting list for sure. Um, you know, I wasn't expecting Malik Beasley to be a contestant at the start of the season. Or Brunson, honestly. Bron- I mean, he's a solid shooter, but not three-point contest shooter. I don't know. I, I feel like not all of these guys are elite three-point shooting players like we could imagine they could be. Obviously, Damian Lillard, he's one of the best all-time in three-point champ. shootings. Yeah. But, like, some of these players, like, even Mitchell, I don't even picture him as a, you know, elite three-point shooting player by any means. I feel like they're trying to get a little bit of star power in there to keep yeah. the eyes on with the dunk contest. Compared to the dunk contest. Star power, so I, I, I understand where it's going from. Because if you say like... And I you, love the big man down there. Kat, I do. And being Lori. in this. And Lori. And Lori. Lori's yeah. a good shooter. Uh, we each wanted to pick who we think is going to win. So, Jace, take it away. I'm going to sound like a homer. Yeah, yeah you But do. he was the runner-up <clears throat> at last year's three-point contest. So Tyrese Halliburton, I think, is going to win it on his home floor this time. Obviously, he's still battling that hamstring injury, but I don't, think, I don't think that'll affect his shooting in this contest. I want to see how it goes with the glass floor, though. They have that glass LED floor Very now. In so I'm, I'm interested to see how players' shoes <clears throat> are holding up on that, even when they're shooting basketball, because they still can't affect it at yeah. times. But I think Halliburton, in front of his home crowd at Lucas Oil Stadium, is going to win the three-point contest. Um, for my pick, I'm going to go with Ice Trigger Trey Young. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally think he's the best pure shooter in this list. I think that the way that he has a quick release, he's a phenomenal shooter. He's relatively consistent when he wants to be if he's taking smart shots. And this is the definition of smart shots, is practice jump shots. I think that Trey Young comes out on top of this one, personally. My underdog goes Malik Beasley. Imagine he wins that. Malik Beasley, hey. Imagine Malik Beasley winning a three-point contest in 2024. (laughs) That is a... um, (laughs) I mean, I have nothing but respect for Malik Beasley. He's a phenomenal player. Yes. Yeah. Definitely was an odd pick. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm having troubles. Um, Breathe. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> moving on to the dunk contest. Uh, this is an interesting group of players. 
the dunk hunt has lost its way. It, 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 since, we need since a the, new challenge. Since the Aaron Gordon and who was the other one? Zach Levine. Thank, thank, thank you, Zach Levine. Since those dunk contests, it's, it's just lost its way. Obviously, last year it kind of got revitalized with Mac McClung winning it. Obviously, he's back. I mean, that dude. Something no else. one expected him to go out there and do the dunks he, he did. <laughs> I mean, but then like you see him, and then you see another G League player and Obi Toppin's brother Jacob Toppin. I don't even know what he can do. He's talented. He he, he can fly. Jacob Toppin can fly. Um, Mac McClung can fly. I mean, I think both. And of then these guys Jamie was Jaime Hackwas. Jaime Hackwas. Yeah, ever say his name? Not my, I, I, I don't know. I'm not a very um, educated player on Jaime, but I do know that he's a phenomenal player. He's a phenomenal player. I just don't know what he can do okay, dunking wise. Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown is the definition of a tomahawk dunk at most, but please prove Why is me he in wrong. the dunk contest? I, I, I just genuinely, you see these three guys and then you see Jalen Brown. Star power, I guess. He's one of the only people that accepted He's going to put it. the ball in his left hand and immediately lose it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's a dunk that'll get him a 10 out of 10 is dribbling left, but besides <laughs> the point. We each picked our winner for this one. Who do you got? Um, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go ahead and give it to Toppin. I mean, I know what Obi can do on dunks. I, I kind of wish he was in it. I'm assuming that he got an offer. I would mm -hmm. have to think. I'm sure he was in it in the past. Remember correctly. He's, he's been before. I'm pretty sure. I'm surprised he didn't get an offer. You know, being the hometown player here. Mm -hmm. But if he can, I mean, if Jacob can fly anyway like Obi can, I could see him doing it, really anything. But I know who you're gonna go with. Back to back. Yep. There the it clung. is. One of the best dunk contest dunkers we have seen in a while. I mean, it's just, he, he does something different. And he, it's, it's you know, nice. He's on the Magic technically now, right? So he'll, he'll, he'll be wearing a Magic jersey during that game. Dude, not. I don't even know what he's on. He's I, on the Osceola Magic. So I'm assuming it's the G League. League Magic team. So I thought they were Lakeland, but they must have moved. Um, I got no clue anymore. I got no clue. Um, we, way, we, got, we got two G League players I, in the don't, contest. Don't judge on the picture. This is from last year when he won it. So, I mean, I still. But, hey, I mean, we, we picked the two G League players. Yeah. Mac McClung is going to take, because there's a reason to pick from the G League. We should do that more often. Get them on the national stage. They actually probably would want to do it. So give me Mac McClung. Okay. Um, going on to the skills challenge, uh, of course. This is, a, this is an interesting challenge. They did it last year, too. They have like, that, like a team jazz. Which I like. I like. Having the hometown team gets the hometown crowd into it. So they got the team pacers. But I don't know about Miles Turner being in this. I don't know how he's going <laughs> to do this. But... Um, I mean, <laughs> we each one with our picks. <laughs> um, and I think it was, uh, I don't think we either picked Team Pacers. I think they're the worst of these three, the Team Pacers. I mean, Halliburton's going to be good. Matthew's going to be good. Turner is the one that I'm worried about in yeah. the skills challenge. Um, I'm going to go with Team All-Stars. I think, I think they're the most talented in this bunch. We know Scotty Barnes and Maxi had a moment last year right? at, the, at the All-Star game. <laughs> <laughs> they had a moment last year at the All-Stars, whatever challenge was not. So I think them combined with Trey Young is going to be the elite squad Team All-Star for the yeah, win. You remember Scotty Barnes missing like eight layups? I, I do Listen, remember that very vividly. That was hilarious. But Scotty Barnes, I mean, he's one of the funniest dudes in the league, Scotty yeah. Barnes, bro. I can't. I mean, there are some <laughs> allegations. <laughs> Alle allegations, not, not in a bad way. Not, not bad, bad allegations, way. but. <laughs> we got we to gotta, you know, provide context. Yeah. It's not bad allegations. He's, he's, a, he's a special soul, but we love him so much. <laughs> um, this is the franchise player for the Raptors, by the way. Um, he's a very talented. Oh, I but, love Scotty Barnes. Uh, give me two top picks. Um, okay. I think Balo Pancaro, Anthony Edwards, and Victor Wembayana. There isn't like, isn't like a dunk in the skills challenge. We're gonna see Wemby jump from the, 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 the three point line and dunk it. Because uh, why the not? Most athletic when it comes to being like okay. the most variety of skills. Yeah. Um, obviously, I mean this is a pretty talented group. But I just after after this, I, I had. I but hey, if Team Pacers win, that'd be crazy. Yeah, <laughs> but, he'd, be, he'd be happy. But uh, yeah, give me give me Team Top. I picks. mean, this is like a consolation award at this point. Yeah, I, would, like I, I still wish he would have won the in season tournament. But man, LeBron James, All man. Right. <laughs> uh, moving on to the last of Saturday's event, my the one I'm going to be tuning into. Probably the only one I'm going to be tuning into. I'm not going to lie to you. The world might burn if Sabrina wins. Steph versus Sabrina. I personally think that this is an awful idea for Steph Curry. This is a horrible idea because it, um, it, 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 can, it can only go wrong here for Steph. Exactly. If he loses this, that's not good. If he <laughs> loses this, people are going to instantly be, it's rigged, it's blah, blah, blah. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Um, if, Steph lo if Steph wins, it's going to be, oh, he beat a woman, it doesn't matter. However, <laughs> from my point of view, I actually like this. I'm From Steph's standpoint, It's I an okay idea. I, yeah. I just don't know if they... From right Steph's thing. standpoint, I would have said no because this is a lose lose for him. But as a fan, I'm intrigued. No, 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 no. Two no, of yeah. the best shooters in the world going head to head. 
Hey, Next year, we're going to see Caitlin Clark in this. Yeah, a little, a little gender battle ain't hurt nobody when it comes to these kind of situations. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to get people talking. I mean, it, it's like I said, it's the only thing see, I'm going to watch. I think they should do is have two different, like, times they go. Mm -hmm. When Curry has to shoot from the women's ball and the women's arc, and she has to shoot with the men's ball that and the men's arc. That would be interesting, Curry shooting a women's ball. Because it is different. But, I mean, he'd probably do better with the women's than the men's. Because, I mean, do better with the women's than she will with the men's because yeah. the hand sizes are. I get that. I'm very intrigued. I'm more just I I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm not very educated on Sabrina. I don't watch WNBA. She's a good she, she's but probably I do know the best shooter in the best WNBA in the world. She uh, I don't think she's and, as good of a shooter as Caitlin Clark is in college. Yeah, but obviously they don't, they can't choose her because she's currently a college. Genuinely athlete. think this is a pretty good idea. It's like this is the only the only thing I'm saying is if I was Steph, I would have said absolutely not. Yeah. Because you have a chance to either embarrass yourself on national TV or embarrass yourself on. National How about TV. the winner goes into the actual three point contest? That would be interesting to see, but then they have to change it all around and stuff like yeah, that if she true. wins. And it but would she be won't win, I don't think. So. I mean, I, I think I, Curry's Curry the best shooter in the world. Yeah. So, I mean, give me Steph Curry to win this. But. Did y'all see what Curry did to the Pacers? He uh, had like four. Will was he at the game last night. My roommate was at the game last night. He came home, he was so sad. He, he went <laughs> six for six in the first half, outside the arc, eight for nine at halftime, had 29 points yeah. at halftime. There's like 40 or something like that. Curry torched Indiana. Yeah, that's, that's Curry for you. One of the best players in the world still, despite the Warriors sucking. Um, Moving on, last yesterday was 2-8-24, Kobe mm -hmm. and Gianna Day, of course. The, the Kobe statue unveiled. How, how do you feel about it? Man? I love that. I do, too. People are complaining about it, but... That's I, the right statue, because that was from, what, his 81-point game at the end of the, yeah. his last ever game? Yep. That's the perfect statue to, I think, show how much of an impact he had on this Lakers team I in think his career. I that Kobe being celebrated, and being on the day, obviously, his daughter's number and then his two numbers, I think that it's... It's a great nod having his mm -hmm. wife come up there, and obviously, you know, there Kobe was an inspiration to so many people. He was an inspiration Still to today. the entirety of this generation. In fact, I mean, some people are going to tell you that Kobe's a goat, this and stuff like that, because that's the man that inspired them to play basketball. And I think a lot of people, every basketball fan, knows where they were the day that he passed away. So for him to finally get immortalized and be a statue outside of Crypto.com. Right. Absolutely. Staples Center to me still. It's um, Staples in our hearts, but. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful, bit of beautiful tribute. I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Best thing. Uh, moving on to the happy news in LA. Uh, the Clippers finally take the first seed, and they look phenomenal. Oh, man. I, they looked disjointed to begin the season. They really did. But these last m month and a half, two months or so, they have been the best team in the NBA in the entire league. Mm -hmm. Better than Boston, in my opinion, these last few months. Mm -hmm. they, I mean, they've figured it out. Mm -hmm. PG, Kawhi, Russ is doing his thing off the bench. They have the squad to go out and win it all. Will they? I don't think so. It's just the Clippers' heritage that they don't win yeah. a championship. I mean, I don't, think, I don't know. If they, I, they've never won. I, I, I want to say it. They hadn't won, but I don't, have, they ever, have they ever even made the finals before? I do not think so. Off the top of my head, I do not think so. Have they even made the Western Conference Finals before? That they have with Chris Paul, I'm pretty sure. Did they? Because uh, they, I, I know they always lost in the semifinals of the conference. Mm, I thought they made it once. Maybe. They, I, Maybe I, I think history. they made it once. I think they made it once. But either way, the Clippers are a losing organization. Until recently, they were the little brother of the Lakers. Still kind of are, but at least they have their own arena coming and, soon. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it next year? They have the it new is arena? next year. Imagine so this is how, the perfect timing for yeah, the Clippers to become good. how cool it would be to have a banner. Also, hey, I just want to kind of have a side note here. Paul George... So obviously Kawhi resigned his contract. He's had, you know, he's going to be in LA for the next few years. PG has yet to do so. Yep. And last night there was a post. There's rumblings about PG possibly wanting to reunite in Indiana with Halliburton. I think that would be a beautiful send off for Paul George. Um, yeah, obviously you're. I feel a little like you would fill that three slot perfectly. But for I'm Indiana. unbiased. I think that having Paul George in back home where he where he's supposed to be at, playing with a team that can could compete for. A title because he could be that final piece that we yeah. the Pacers need because you have Siakam at the four, Halliburton at that one, Ben I, at the two, you put PG at the three, and then I you might Paul have a squad. If he doesn't leave now, he retires as a Pacer. He's gonna be. He's you gonna think retire. so? I do think so. Even if it's for a season, I think he retires. I as mean, Pacer. after all everything he went through in Indiana, I mean, he was aggravated with the front office yeah. at a, to a certain extent that he just demanded a trade. I just I feel like this is a new team, and I feel like he still loves the city. It's just it. I do think. He and I mean. He has like a podcast too where he talked to Halliburton a lot. Yeah. And I mean, the connection's there. I, yeah. could, I could see it happening. I give it about a 30% chance he actually leaves LA. I, yeah, so I, give I, like I mean, if, if, they, if they go far and win it all, he's staying. Yeah. There's no, there's it's no a argument. It's great team. Don't ruin it now. I'm going to say. 
Last, speaking of what I thought was going to be a solid team, well, not really. I remember being on last call, and me and, I'm pretty sure me and you were on it. Maybe. It might have just been me. Yeah. I was telling them that the Magic are going to fall off. And the Magic Everyone knew they would. Magical run this Everyone season. knew they would. I mean, they have a much improved squad from what they've had these past few years. Obviously, Bancaro is a superstar yeah. for the Magic. And they have the team to be a playoff play-in team, but that's about yeah. it right now. I mean, they had that great start to the season, but that's just all it was. Yeah. It was just, a, I think, a lucky start to the season. Yeah. They had a fairly easy schedule, and now that they've kind of come through some hardships, now they're back down to where they they're probably the should be. the definition of a team that whenever things are sunshines and rainbowy and everything's happy, they're going to play good, but the second that things started getting dark, they started to struggle a little bit. I still think they can contest with a lot of teams in the Eastern Conference when it comes yeah. to playoff games. Yeah. I don't think they'll get past the first round. Yeah, yeah. And to all the people back in the day, I remember this was a massive debate whenever Boncaro was uh, drafted. It was between him, Chet, and Jabari. And people were, I said Boncaro was clear cut number one. And people called me dumb. They're like, it should be Chet, it should be Jabari. I think that Paolo is proving that he is, as of right now, the best player. Oh, that so far, was. yes. Obviously, Chet had that Chet, yeah. injury setback. He's proven that he's a pretty good player in OKC. Yeah. Jabari has really never done much for Houston. Yeah. I definitely think that, that Boncaro is. Um, the future of Orlando, which 100%. Is, hopefully he doesn't become the next of in line big man that goes to the Orlando. Lakers. Orlando, yeah, yeah, goes to the Lakers more. I Orlando. swear, if I see Boncaro in the Lakers jersey at any point in his career, it's gonna get wicked. But, um, <laughs> it's gonna get wicked. <laughs> uh, I, I personally, I'm a fan of this team. I think that this team, they can make moves in the future, and my friend Andrew would love to hear that because he has a massive lifelong magic. Real quick before we close it out, it's about to be All Star break. All Star. Prediction for the finals. All star big prediction for the NBA finals. Your winner and your loser. NBA finals, give me Celtics winning it. And honestly, give me the Clippers. Go making it in. Celtics well, Clippers. Well, I don't want to be the same as you, man. Um, give me New York, the Knicks, and the Thunder. Let's get wicked. Oh, like wow. you said. <laughs> Let's get real no, spicy. No, 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 no. I'm going to go Knicks, Clippers, Clippers win it. All right. Well, that's going to be all today from Grand Slam. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you all next week.